Hey you guys, I'm going to teach you how to make UV maps in ZBrush. It's, uh, I'm using ZBrush 4R6 and you can use any version you want as long as you have access to UV Master. Um, hopefully this will explain it for those of you who are a little confused. I saw a question on Reddit today and I completely understand what's confusing about it because I was confused about it for a long time as well and it's really one of those things that comes with practice and time and patience and and uh, just trying to learn the uh, the best way that you can uh, apply a technique and that comes with a lot of failure so you have to just practice and mess up and try a couple of times until you get it right and before you know it you'll have uh, a process and a workflow that works and you'll understand it a lot better as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the demo head I'm gonna drag out the demo head and go into my edit mode and let's look at what we've got here We've got, uh, I'm going to turn the eyeballs off and just focus on the head for this particular example, but what we've got in terms of geometry, we've got three subdivision levels. Uh, the, the top level has 57,000 polys. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subdivide a couple more times. I've got five subdivisions now and 911,000 polys. So just imagine that this is your model. You know, you've created some sort of monster or whatever and you've got a million polys and you haven't poly painted it or anything but what you're gonna do is you're gonna poly paint it and so what I'm gonna do is exactly that I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna apply a skin shade and I'm just gonna pick a color a random you know whatever color just pick whatever works for you it's a pretty gross color but We'll stick with it for this. I'm just going to fill my object. Um, and for the for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to make some notes on uh, the model's face. So we're going to see forehead, and you're going to see the neck. You're going to see the left shoulder, and you're going to see the right shoulder. And then the back. And the back of the head. And I'm just doing this so you'll have a frame of reference uh, and understand what's going on with the UV maps. So this looks good to me. I've got a model now. It's poly painted. I'm ready to like take this thing into a game engine or an external renderer or whatever, whatever you're into. What's really important with UV maps is that you keep subdivision levels. You have, to, you have to keep it so you can drop down to the lowest one and create the maps very easily. And because this model has five subdivisions, it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to uh, take my Z plugin window and drag it over to my left hand side so I have access to Z, uh, UV Master. And here's what we're going to do. Whenever you're working on a model in UV Master, the, one of the most important things you can do is work on your clone, work on a clone of that particular model. And what that's going to do is it's going to drop everything down to the lowest subdivision level and create a duplicate of the model that you can make the maps from. So we're going to make the maps on the clone and then copy those maps and paste them onto our actual model. So a couple of things about UV Master. You have unwrap if you're you know going to create the maps for one of your subtools. You can also unwrap all if you have five or ten or fifteen or however many subtools. You can unwrap all, and that will create UVs for all of them. Uh, symmetry if your model is symmetrical and you want to keep symmetrical UV islands, uh, then you can click that. I'm going to keep that active for this particular demo. And then polygroups are really awesome as well. Um, if you have a model, uh, say a body, and your arms are a polygroup, and your head is a polygroup, and your legs are a polygroup, then if you click this button and unwrap your model, it's going to create UV islands for each of those polygroups. So polygroups become really powerful and allow you to have a lot of control over your UVs. And uh, 
that's more of an advanced demo that I can also put together for you. But for the sake of this, let's just stick with this for now. So I'm going to click work on clone. And what happens, you know you're in a clone because it changes your model to this white model. And in your subtool palette, you'll see CL. CL and the name of the subtool that you're working on. So clone demo head. And I'm going to unwrap. And it goes through this process up here at the top and it says one island generated in 5.35 seconds. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to click flatten now on the UV master and look what happens. That's the UV map that, uh, that you're looking for. I mean, the, the Redditor that was asking the question uh, about understanding UV maps didn't understand how to get this view. And it was because he or she was over here trying to decide what type of UV map to create and they created uh, a different type that that didn't allow you to lay it out like the bearskin rug. Don't even worry about this thing over here. Just stick to UV Master for now. So look at this map. You can see the eyeball, you can see the ear, you can see things are sort of split and it's symmetrical because symmetry is highlighted. So it's split evenly down the middle. It's like it cut the face in half and it split it and created the map. Um, I don't want that to happen. I want the map to just show the front of the face. I want any of these seams to go down the back of the head. Um, I'm going to unflatten this. So when we unflatten it takes us back to our clone. So what's cool is that I can enable control painting now. And when I do that, I have three options that uh, immediately become viewable. Actually there are five, but we're going to focus on these three protect, attract, and erase. If I click protect and I come into my model and I start painting, what you'll see is that protect colors the model red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect the face. I want the face and the ears to uh, stay seam free. And that's because I'm going to take this, you know, I want to take my model into an external re edit, uh, renderer and uh, do damage there. So what I want to do is I just want to protect the front of the model so I get a nice a nice front view of it. And in the back I'm going to click attract. And when you paint attract it's blue. So anything that's blue is going to draw attention to the UV master to create seams along those areas if it can. Now, I mean you can't just come in here and color the entire model red and hope that you have a perfect model. It doesn't work like that. You have to create an area for the seams to exist and ZBrush is going to do its best to try to create uh, the seams in that area. If you mess up, you can click Erase and just come in and paint and it creates it white. Uh, it makes it white right there so you can just go in and erase whatever you want. This looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with it. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to unwrap it again because I've basically I've edited my clone and so I need to re-unwrap that UV. So I'm going to unwrap it. It unwraps it in three seconds. And now check out what happens when I flatten. Whoa, well this looks better because I've got this area of my face and I've got my ears, but this is sort of nuts what's going on over here. So I know something's pretty messed up um, because it's not giving me the look that I want. So I'm going to unflatten it and come back into my control painting. And what we'll see, let's, let's just come in here and I'm going to erase some of this. Just pull some of the attention away from these areas. I'm just going to repaint some of the areas right through here. Let's just see what happens. This may fix it, it may not. Let's just see what, what it does. I'm going to click unwrap again. And then I'm going to flatten. There we go, that's way better. So what you see is my, I protected the face and the ears and so it creates a really nice UV island for this entire head and the seam goes around the back of the head and this is your UV map. It's done. It looks awesome. So what I'm going to do is click unflatten and I'm going to choose copy UVs from the UV master and that puts them on the clipboard. And now I'm just going to come back over to my model. And remember, I'm in the clone model, right? In the clone subtool right now. So I'm going to go back to my model with my poly painting. Click on that layer, and I'm going to paste the UVs. 
Okay, it doesn't give you any sort of feedback. So if you want to know if your UV map exists, come down to your UV map sub palette. This is where this becomes useful. You'll see that delete UV is active. So basically what that means is there's a UV on this model now. And so if I want to take my poly paint, I've put, you know, if I put hours into my poly painting and it looks awesome and I want to create a UV map from that poly paint, well, what I can do now, since I've got a UV on my model, I can go into my texture map sub palette and you'll see that the options here, the very first one, new from poly paint. Now watch what happens. I'm going to press it and check it out. It gives me a UV based on, or it gives me a texture map based on the UV that I just created. So you can see all of my writing and everything on it. So this is awesome. This is exactly what you need to export a texture map to another editor. So the way you get it to the other editor is you're going to choose clone texture. And when you click that, it puts the texture over here in the te texture sub palette or the texture menu over here on the left hand side. And then you can click on that button and you'll see that you get all the options like you always do. And you're going to click export. And then you can name it whatever you want. And then you have these options. You can choose to export a PSD, a JPEG, a ping, a PT, a piece. CT, uh, a BMP, or a TIFF file. And I'm going to choose a uh, BMP. Um, I export BMPs a lot for key shot renderings. Um, you can experiment with whatever works best for you. Uh, a lot of people use TIFFs, a lot of people use PSDs. Um, it's totally up to you. So I'm just going to save it. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You can export your model now. as an OBJ and then that should be everything you need. You've got your OBJ, you've got your texture map, you're good to go. Anyway, I hope it helped. Good luck.